based on current surveys of public opinion in the United States, uh, it turns out that the majority of Americans think I've done a pretty good job. Uh, that we haven't, in fact, gone too fast, uh, as you describe it. Uh, but what is certainly true is that the American people, <laughs> just like the German people, just like the British and people around the world, are seeing extraordinarily rapid change. The world is shrinking. Economies have become much more integrated. And Demographics are shifting. Because of the internet and communications, the clash of cultures is much more direct. People feel, uh, I think, less certain about their identity, less certain about economic security. Uh, they're looking for some means of control. And uh, what that means is, is that uh, the politics in all of our countries uh, is, is going to require us to manage technology and global integration <laughs> and all these demographic shifts uh, in a way that makes people feel more control, that gives them more confidence in their future. Uh, but does not resort to simplistic answers or divisions of race or tribe or, uh, or a crude nationalism, which I think can be contrasted to the pride and patriotism that we all feel about our respective countries. Um, and uh, you know, I think that our politics everywhere uh, are going to be going through this bumpy phase. But as long as we stay true to our democratic principles, uh, as long as elections uh, have integrity, as long as we respect freedom of speech, freedom of religion, uh, as long as there are checks and balances in our governments so that uh, the people have the ability to not just make judgments uh, about how well government is serving them, but also change governments if it's, they're not serving them well, then I have confidence that over the long term, uh, progress will continue. Um, and I think it's especially important for those of us who believe in uh, in, in a world where we're interdependent, uh, that believes in mutual interests and mutual respect between nations, it's particularly important that we reach out to everybody in, in our countries, uh, those who feel disaffected, those who feel left behind by globalization, uh, and address their concerns in constructive ways as opposed to uh, more destructive ways. Uh, and I think that can be done. Uh, but uh, it, it's hard. It requires creativity. It requires effective communications. Part of what's changed in politics is social media and how people are receiving information. Uh, it's easier to make negative uh, attacks and simplistic slogans than it is to communicate uh, complex policies, um, but we'll figure it out. So ultimately, I remain uh, optimistic uh, about not just America's futures, but uh, the direction uh, that the world is going in. And part of what makes me most optimistic is if you look at the attitudes of young people. Across the board, uh, young people are much more comfortable with <coughs> respecting differences. They are much more comfortable with uh, diversity. Uh, they are much less likely to express um, uh, attitudes that divide us be between us and them.
uh, they see themselves as part of uh, a global economy <laughs> that they can navigate successfully. Um, and, uh, and are showing enormous creativity and entrepreneurship and uh, working with each other across borders. Uh, so that's where the future is. Uh, but we have to create that bridge to the future. And that means making sure we're paying attention to the wages of workers in countries, and making sure that we're investing uh, in their education and uh, their skills, that we are uh, growing the economy uh, in smart ways and rebuilding our infrastructure and investing in science and development, uh, and that uh, you know, we, uh, we stay true to those values that helped get us here. And if we do that, I think we're going to be fine. Yeah, erstens zu der Frage. Well, on the issue first of independence of, of, of Germany, after the time of national socialism, uh, Germany has been given an enormous amount of help, uh, particularly and also from the United States of America. The fact that um, we were able to um, enjoy um, European, uh, sorry, German unification is due first and foremost to the help of the United States of America. And ever since Germany was able to regain its unity, it is in an even stronger position to give its contribution to upholding this order to which we feel committed and uh, for which particularly people in the German Democratic Republic uh, stood out there in the streets uh, to keep this up, to, to maintain this order, um, particularly also in our country. Now, we're um, trying to do more than it used to be. Um, at 26 years ago, and there are a number of other areas where we have to also make a stronger contribution. We will all have to make do more uh, in uh, development cooperation. Um, it's important that the, these disparities in um, the living conditions uh, cannot be allowed in this digital period to be too marked. Each and every one must be given an opportunity to participate, which is why Germany's fate in many ways depends on the firmness of its alliance with NATO, with the European Union. We cannot stand alone with 80 million people. In this world of today, you cannot, when you just stand on your own, achieve much, um, even though you may be economically strong. Um, so alliances are part of our destiny as a nation, part of our future as a nation, and this is what guides me in my policy, what guides my government as a whole. Secondly, this wave of populism uh, that seems to engulf us, well, look at the, and that comes, seems, in your words, to come from the United States, look at the European Parliament. We, there are a lot of people who are looking for simplistic solutions, for um, who are sort of preaching policies of, um, well, very unfriendly policies. We have them here in Europe, too. We have them here in Germany, too. And to take up where the president left off, um, digitization is, in a way, a disruptive force, a disruptive technological force that brings about deep-seated change, transformation of society. Look at the um, history of the printing press. When this was invented, what sort of consequences this had? Or industrialization, what sort of consequences that had? Uh, very often, it led to enormous transformational processes within individual societies. And it took a while until societies learned how to find uh, the right kind of policies uh, to contain this and to manage and steer this. And I think we live in a period of profound transformation, very similar to um, when we had a transition from agricultural societies to industrial societies. Now, um, when we, for example, see shifts of huge um, uh, production lines from certain areas to other countries, people tend to ask the question, where's my place in this modern world? We have this here, this tendency in our country, we have it in other countries, trying to keep a, com a society together, trying to keep the older and the younger people together, trying to keep those who live in rural areas together with those who live in cities is one of the um, most important and most noble tasks of politicians these days, trying 
trying to see to it that each and every one can find his or her place. But those that are um, belong purportedly to certain groups say we are the people and not the others. That is something that we cannot allow to happen. Um, that is something that um, um, I think at the time in the GDR, um, at the time when we when we had this in the GDR, where the people stood in the street and said we are the people, that was something that filled me with great joy. But the fact that these people have hijacked it certainly is not something that fills me with a great joy. We have to find new ways of addressing people, new ways of getting into contact with people, but I'm optimistic that we were able to do so.